first thing to talk about here on the random show first thing to talk about is that we need to cover the fire and the kid right because flipping nj ranger has been on my case about this fucking fire and the kid clip for a while now he's been hyping it up he's been fucking saying it's the best clip ever this is gonna be funny please watch it please please it's gonna be funny you're gonna fucking die and i'm hoping it's true because if he's not true if nj ranger lied to us if he hyped this clip up and it's absolutely terrible guess what's gonna happen yeah bitch you guessed it the band hammer's coming down if this clip is terrible and it doesn't live up to expectation nj ranger the band hammer is coming down on you but i'm sure you're gonna come through for us i'm sure this clip is gonna be good so let's check this out at the beginning of the show let's just enter it straight away so in episode number what nine five seven right here they get up to the thousands you know i didn't know they got that many episodes they're getting up to the thousands already this is episode nine five seven Look at the downvotes. They still, most people don't have, again, I'm going to say this because I, I just think I'm a bit of a dork. Most people aren't dorks like me. Most people don't have the downvote plugin installed on their Google Chrome. I think most people don't see downvotes. So the fact that people still downvote YouTube videos, even though most people don't see them, is hilarious because it's like, even though they know people won't see it, they know the creator will. They're like, you know what? I want you to see it. <laughs> so they still downvote it that's so mean you know it's so fucking mean most people won't even see these downvotes but they still downvote them i fucking love it it's so fucking hilarious or like thumbs down whatever it is and um, let's play the clip anyway let's see what brian callen's doing i got the kind of gist of this clip i think the gist of this clip is callen trying to riz up this new intern girl so let's see how awkwardly callen tries to um make friends with people who are like 20 years younger than him and shit let's see how this works this kind of reminds me of like you know when you're at work and you get you know you get left with the table of kids or people significantly younger people that you don't really speak to too much and you have to make that awkward clunky conversation you know and make it work and kind of you know hey how are you how's your holiday how's the wife you got kids yet is the pet okay? Hey, you saw that thing on the news? You know, that kind of reminds me of that. So let's see what happens. All right, Brennan's getting his truck uh, worked on. And uh, he was supposed to be here at 1230. It's now 112. And this is me starting the podcast on my own with Sanaz and Chin. <laughs> and um, he doesn't even know their names. He just about remembered their names. He just about remembered their names. <laughs> He's so... He's such a flyby night. He's such a fucking, you know, he just pops. Like, that's why I have no sympathy for him. You know, there's a current meme or there's a current conversation around Brian Callen. And the suggestion is that Brendan might have, like, scammed him out of ownership of the fire and the kid. The theory goes when Brian Callen got cancelled, um, Brian nobly told Brendan to take more money. And because he wasn't involved, you could take more percentage or something like that. And because of that, Brendan took it. And then obviously he continued doing the show, I think for like a year or something on his own with by himself or the other co-hosts. And then with obviously with Chappelle and Malik. And ever since then, he's not really relinquished that control. He still kept hold of that percentage, you know, change. And um, obviously Callum's probably too pussy to, to want it back. Or maybe he feels like he doesn't deserve it. But something's happened where it feels like Callan's more of an employee as he is a, he's not really like a co-owner, co-founder. He kind of acts like he's somebody that got hired just to kind of be a co-host. And maybe it's for the better because he does really act disconnected. He doesn't really get involved. He's not, he doesn't really do the merch. He doesn't really do much else apart from just sit and just go away. And usually he's late, you know, usually he's fucking late. So, um, I don't really have sympathy for him in that regard, you know, because he's you're grown up, you're not really that involved, you're always late, and you kind of treat the podcast as like a second, you don't treat it like it's a priority, which I never really liked. I think from the beginning, I've always had a little bit of a dislike for Brian because I remember in the beginning when I used to like the Fire and the Kid, when I actually used to like it, he would always kind of act like the podcast was kind of beneath him, like it wasn't his main priority. He was kind of using the podcast as a way to kind of get himself more famous to get more gigs and whatever maybe which kind of did work at the time because if i'm not mistaken i think he got schooled 
no, sorry, I think he got he, he auditioned for the Goldbergs in part because of how his you know fame was kind of growing around the podcast, and then obviously from that, he obviously still he, obviously, he also still got he got that show called Scored as well, which was kind of like a offshoot of um whatever that show was that he was on was it whatever what, I don't forget the name I said, and that obviously led to him having more roles, which obviously led to the Joker cameo, blah 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 blah. But yeah, he acts a lot like an employee; he doesn't act like an owner. Let's continue. Um. We are represented here. The uh, um, the the yeah, United so, yeah. Nations. It was. It, I think the show goes. It was actually the original show is Goldberg's. Then the offshoot um, was obviously scored. <laughs> Guys, feeling good right now. Just uh, got the results of my impossible checkup. Oh, that's Brennan. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see what he has. Come to say. on, bro. Can't you can't you just do a show without like having to answer the phone? Like, look how he's holding the phone. Even that's the most boomer way to hold a phone. Isn't it? Look at him. <laughs> he's an old man isn't it? he's getting older by the minute which is okay but part of me just thinks like am i mad am i mad to say this can't you just give up is that okay just giving up one chasing relevancy trying to be in the conversation all the time at a certain point can't you just give up you've had a good enough career you've had you've got loads of credits you've done amazing you've been in movies you did tv shows You've been in Hollywood for a while, bro. Like, and then you get cancelled for rape and shit. Everything gets taken away from you. There's no shame in giving up and just deciding to just do regular work or just focus on doing stand-up and not being on social media. That's something that I kind of was really impressed by Cat Williams. I was like, you know what? Cat Williams could easily be annoying. If Cat Williams was on social media like these were guys were, people wouldn't like him the way they do. I think the, cat, the fact that Cat Williams isn't heavily on social media, isn't like Burt Kreischer promoting his dates with funny little skits and all that sort of shit, and he just kind of lives his life and does his shows and acts like a man his age, I think that's what endears him to the public. Because obviously, you know, when he speaks, he speaks from the heart, he gives it up, he doesn't sugarcoat shit, but he also kind of just, he stays out of the way, you know? I think there's something to be said for just staying out of the way and just kind of, you know, growing old gracefully and not just like being on the treadmill of the content machine like because you know like you've done it all bro like part of the reason why i do so much is because i enjoy it obviously i enjoy doing it but it's also partly because of the age thing i can kind of do it i can kind of stay up all hours of the night and do the stuff because i just like to do it i just enjoy doing it for shits and giggles but surely at that age 57 years old like come on bro you're approaching your 60s and you're still here trying to like making TikToks and all this shit. It's like, give up. Just give up, man. Hi, Brandon. Hello, bud. I'm in the truck. Oh, yeah, I know, but I'm starting the podcast. So you better hurry up, okay? All you're, right, pal. You're I'll on air. You Do you have anything to say to the fans? <laughs> all right. <laughs> anyway, uh, he's too into his truck. What's he doing? There? The lack of chemistry between them is just frightening, isn't it? It's crazy how quickly things can change. Someone gets cancelled. Someone's not on the pod enough. Out of sight, out of mind. I don't know, but but this is this is he's too into his truck. It's like you're you're souping it up. He's at I I mean, he's he calls me from the shop and I just hear zzz, zzz, zzz. <laughs> that's a tire shop. You can hear it in the back. I'm like, what happened to your tire? I it, 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 I got a flat, and he, something is something else he's doing. He's doing something to the hubs or something. Or the hubcaps. Obviously, that's an indication that the show's kind of gone to shit. The fact that Brennan would go to a garage to get his car fixed before going to the studio is dumb because most people would know, you know, not even being a gear, a gear ahead, you would know that, you know, garages aren't an exact science. You don't just go in there at four and, you know, your the work starts at 4.01 and then you leave at 4.30. Maybe when you get there, they're backed up a bit. They're still finishing another car. They're talking to a fucking client or customer, or whatever. You have to kind of wait around. It's not just like, you know, my appointment's at two. I'm going to leave at 2.30. So the fact that he went to a garage before the studio, knowing that it, w it could take some time, is obviously a sign, I think, subconsciously of where the priorities are. Because they know at this point, it's autopilot. They know at this point, it's autopilot. They know at this point, it doesn't matter what they do. They just turn up. And for the most part, people just watch the show because they're already baked in. That's something I think a lot of these guys don't like to say and talk about because it obviously 
put this it obviously dismisses their hard work but part of the reason why people kind of like i guess dislike them and think that they've all been carried by rogan is because they all got in early during the content podcast game that nowadays even though their shows aren't as good as they were when they begun when when they first begun because they got in early enough they've got like baked in fan base they've got a fan base that's not going anywhere and i know myself being a long-term podcast listener i've got podcasts that i still listen to that are not that good anymore but i just listen to them because they occupy an hour of my time so i don't want to take them off my listening you know schedule or lineup because then i have to go and find something else that can fill that schedule and it's just long to find it so if i've got something on my list that i've kind of listened to and it's but it's horrible it's not as good as it once was but it's possible and I can put it on the background and just do what I want to do during the day, I'm going to keep listening to it. So a lot of these guys, the, obviously this podcast has been an example, they just, you know, they can just turn up and do the bare minimum and no one's ever going to really duck out from the show. They're still going to be able to pay their mortgages, pay their car note off the show because they've got fan base built in from the beginning. So they don't really need to make the effort of turning up and having a fun show, entertaining their fans, whatever. It can just be like this you know, I'm in my truck, I'm in here, I'm talking to this, I'm talking about knob, hub, hub, what, hubcaps, whatever, hub, hub knobs, that's, those are biscuits, but um, it's like, come on, man, this is awful. Or whatever it is. So, um, but anyway, back to me. They looked at my, I just had this crazy checkup at a place called Fountain Life, where they, they scan your entire body. They look at, they shoot dye into your body. Honestly, honestly, can somebody please tell me, please, for the love of God, please somebody tell me in this stream chat. I know I'm health conscious. I know we have some health conscious people in the stream chat. But what is with this obsession with these middle-aged white dudes in LA getting checked up every fucking other week? How often do these guys get checked up? They're always getting some sort of blood work, body work, like something like, what the fuck is going on? I've never heard of people getting checkups so often. Like, what the fuck is that all about? Are they trying to mitigate for their bad lifestyles? Are they all just, are they all scared like Bert is that they all might die and people might not get to see how funny they are? Are they all worried like Bert that they're going to die and everyone's going to miss how awesome they are? Because this is so bizarre, bro. Like, who does this stuff? Like, who gets checked out so often like this? Shoot, die in your body to see what it's like, what? So bizarre again maybe it's not a LA thing maybe it's just like an older man thing when you get to a certain age you have to kind of do that sort of stuff i guess it's the whole like prostate scan it's a whole prostate cancer scam in it right like all these doctors out there that like sticking their fingers in guys bums create this fucking you know conspiracy that when you're a certain age you have to get your thing done it's like yeah right who told you that who told you after at a certain age you have to get your prostate done my ass mate that's just doctors that want to stick their finger in your bum but they're too afraid to admit it so they create this big scam that you have to do it when you're 50. Yeah, all right, whatever you say. So they can look at your heart and your arteries. They look at your muscle mass, your testosterone and everything. It's insane. It's, it's, it was created by Fountain Life. It was founded by Peter Diamandis and Tony Robbins. Hmm. All right, he, Tony Robbins wrote this book called Life Force about, you know, preventative medicine. <laughs> They can get fucked, Coiler. They can get fucked. They can get fucked, mate. They can get fucked. <laughs> medicine where you can look at if you can catch shit early you can cure almost anything oh. and so the idea is to look at but before honestly like what who told him this who who are these juju doctors they go to just because you catch stuff early doesn't mean you're gonna be okay it just means you caught it early <laughs> what the fuck is this stuff it's just a flick of a coin obviously obviously you'd want it to be okay but there's no guarantees it might improve your chances yes but just because you catch stuff early doesn't mean you're going to be magically fine. We get to what's called runaway velocity, which is... <laughs> Prostate Illuminati. <laughs> they think in 20 years, if you can stay alive in 20 years, that's the kind of shit I did right there. If you can stay alive in 20 years, every year you're alive will be a year you live longer. That's how crazy... What? Maybe for you, you're a fucking, you know, trust fund kid with a multi-millionaire dad and you've been rich your whole life. Maybe you, maybe you can. Regular folks have to worry about bills, have to worry about, you know, making sure their kids don't die, you know, have to fucking, you know, juggle a couple of jobs and shit, 
you know, fucking school, college, university, family, whatever, you know, it's a bit difficult. Maybe that just takes, that does take some age off of you. The fact that you have all these troubles, but these type of dudes, like, of course you can live, of course, every 20 years you gain a year because you're fucking rich. <laughs> every year you get older, the less you do. <laughs> you know what i mean the older you get the less you fucking do the less you move um, the more fucking you know the more you lean into your wealth um the more right wing you become <laughs> the more you start hating the pause <laughs> the more you start running over homeless people yeah of course it make, life becomes easier if you could just r run over homeless people all the time right and live behind this massive gate of course your life is going to be better because you don't have to see the pause on you every single day the technology is moving gene editing all kinds of crazy shit what so, prompted you to do this uh i know he's old as fuck that's what prompted him to do she's old as fuck somebody i done something like this uh before and i wanted to do for my show best of i wanted to do something about longevity and the cutting edge of medicine and i just oh it's for his youtube channel okay i get it he's got this youtube channel so I guess he's doing content. We should actually, I might have to do some reactions to his YouTube stuff. I want to see what he, what he does. Let me actually go to his channel on my phone. Let's see what he does here. He does some, he does content on his channel now, right? He's got 117 subscribers and he's, let, oops, let me see his latest video here. His latest video is called How Immigration is Impacting Our Future. <laughs> Who gives a fuck about you and immigration? He's got, a, oh, fucking hell. Brian Callen's got a video here on his channel called National disintegration and how to stop it featuring a guy called peter zeeland that's a hundred thousand views brian callen's got a video that's more views than the fire and the kid <laughs> that's crazy he's getting quite a decent number of views on his shows i'm not going to lie it's great we've done pretty well he's got a guy called a jeff a delta force commander called jeff teagues has got thirty five thousand. there's another guy called mike glover I'm not too sure who that is what war actually looks like 230,000 views fair play fair play okay might have reacted to some of it um but yeah that's what he's doing just pitched it to them and they were like come on down huh. so it's so wild and the doctors they're like my doctors and he, he was he was actually he almost went to Cirque du Soleil like he's 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 an acrobat I know <laughs> the most LA thing ever in the world isn't it why do you even know this what kind of conversations are these that you have with your doctor that you know that he went to a Cirque du Soleil? Like when you when I go to the doctors, you you know you get your fucking you you, you tell them what's wrong with you. They run through you know they kind of figure out what the diagnosis is. They give you the treatment and you go. There's what, what's this conversation where you find out what he did previously, you know what how he likes his eggs, does he like his finger and his butt or something like what is all this shit? and he's got crazy accolades out of john hopkins university so the doctors and the people there live this shit so they're yeah, yeah. why does he talk like that for yeah, yeah. you think you learned that in acting school yeah, yeah. over enunciating words yeah, so you can hear uh, what i say it's like come on bro just speak normal really healthy you know you go to a doctor and the doctor looks like he's got 45 percent of his body's fat oh, yeah. and you're like why are you telling me about health dude you don't live you don't live it that's why guys like does it bother most people like who does that to you anyway what doctors tell you about your weight who are fat when does that happen on a daily is that like a is that like a conspiracy theory they just make this up i can't remember the last time my doctors told me something about my weight like unless i had to get weighed for something like why would they just mention your weight <laughs> what is this <laughs> lane norton and stuff i listen to those guys andy galpin because they're jacked scientists i want that okay, but dude so, they they break so in in brian callan's brain all your doctors have to look like bradley martin if your if your doctor doesn't look like bradley martin i'm not listening to you if your doctor doesn't look like liver king i'm not listening to you down like all the different stats of of how people die heart disease number one cancer number two alzheimer's i think is number four and they're just different things but they can look at everything in your body now we know why brendan doesn't let brian do the shows on his own what the fuck is he talking about man this is so boring now we know why brian doesn't let brendan no why brendan doesn't let brian do shows on his own because what the fuck is this 
You're comedians, bro. Can you make it funny, please? Can you speak about the fucking Epstein list that's been unsealed? Can you maybe make some jokes? Can you fuck around and talk about something embarrassing that happened to you? Like, come on, man. What is this? We don't care. Like, you're not fucking... You're not fucking... What's his name? You're not You're not fucking um, Huberman. You're not... You know what I mean? You're not Huberman, bro. Like, if we want Huberman talk, we go to Huberman. We don't go to fucking you. Allow it body and they can tell like they, so it's one thing to like get a calcium score it's not one thing to get your cholesterol let's see what your arteries are actually look like let's see the difference between hard plaque and soft plaque exactly all this watcher. crazy exactly the watcher i don't even remember what he's talking about exactly <laughs> a minute ago he's just waffling this is hollywood talk man imagine imagine him on coke imagine brian callen cornering you at some hollywood party high on coke imagine He's like this sober. Imagine what he must be like if you if you happen to bump into him and he's on coke or something, and he's just chewing your ear off about fucking um, I don't know um, uh, ivermectin or something, right? He's talking to you about ivermectin nonstop. He's talking to you about fucking multivitamins and stuff, right? Like <laughs> it's like what <laughs> he's talking to you non-stop about trt it's like bro please man leave me alone easy shit now you guys are probably wondering what my testosterone is even though i told you ask me for the show ask yeah, me what my yeah, testosterone Brian. is and have i ever taken <laughs> testosterone no this is my third test my third state-of-the-art test 970 you fucks 970 <laughs> my test yeah we know that because that's why you allegedly you like to rape so much because your test is so high naturally you've always he's like an he's like a he's like an old he's like an old caribbean man that dick never gets soft it's always hard there's never a turn off switch an old caribbean guy is always ready to go an old yard man is always ready an old yard man is always ready give a yard man an opportunity it doesn't matter if he's 70 80 years old he will fuck your brains out that's the same like brian <laughs> doesn't matter how old you are he will fuck your brains out <laughs> whether you consent or you don't <laughs> he's gonna take that pussy <laughs> or that asshole you know he's gonna take either one he's gonna take it he's gonna fucking take it testosterone is 970 and i've never taken anything in my life other than I don't know. Food, water, sleep, sunshine. Yo, why do you shout? Why are you shouting? At your, there's only two people in the room. Why is he screaming for? Fucking hell, bro! This stick of like, I'm. I feel like a small man, so I just scream and shout. Like, bro, calma, calma. And you know, it, chalk it up to my Sicilian roots. Nine seventy is very high. <laughs> my raping heritage, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> my background in rape <laughs> i come from a long line a long line of rapist <laughs> it's in my dna it's hardwired in my code <laughs> allegedly it's hardwired <laughs> from the beginning of time men in my house men in my family have been you know picking up women you know whether they're screaming or not unconscious or not and throwing them over their shoulders and having their way with them because you know <laughs> i come from a family where the men rule the house the men rule the household you know we can do what we want oh can you tell us what the average testosterone should be well uh, somebody at 56 so what is he gonna try to flirt with this girl with testosterone is this what we're gonna get we're gonna get testosterone flirting Brian's going to try and impress her that his dick is ready and he can fuck her right now if she wanted. You want to fuck right now? Let's go. <laughs> going on 57? 200, 300, 400? Wow. Yeah. You're not Whoa. kidding. No, I'm not. Wow. She's like, that dick gets hard, huh? That dick gets hard. Look at Brian. Now. Look, look, look. I can see the eye of the... You know what? I know. I know African guys. I know Caribbean guys. I see that look. I know that look. Look, he's, he's already look. He's already getting tingly. He's already getting a bit of a boner. <laughs> He's getting a bit of a chub. He's getting a small chub already. He's like, oof. Hey, if you keep talking about my testosterone, 
I might have to put the T in your pussy, you know? <laughs> if you keep talking about my test, I might have to test you out. <laughs> Look at that. He's ready to go. He's covering his, he's covering his crutch just in case. I'm not fucking around. That's why I have so much energy. It's what I've been saying. I kind of want to have Brendan go take this test too. I do too. I think he, you know, oh, athletes, guys are taking a lot of hits to the head. <laughs> Typically, that. No, she mentioned Brendan. Fuck. He wanted to fucking smash, and she, 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 you know that, you know that thing that girls do when they don't, when they want to remind you that they got a boyfriend. I've got, yeah. I might have to tell my boyfriend that actually. I might have to call my boyfriend. Yeah, I'll let my boyfriend know. So, like, oh fuck, you know that's what he did. She mentioned Brendan there. Shit. She's like, oh yeah, bro, true. Okay, bro, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Brendan about it later. It's like, damn. Damn, but I wanted to fuck you. <laughs> can mess with your pituitary gland. Oh. So uh, head trauma can lower your testosterone. Hmm. It can be a real problem. Okay. Either way, the point is, nobody should look at me because I'll get you pregnant from here. <laughs> oh Wow, that was direct. You understand what I'm saying? Shin, why are you so quiet? What's up? Why, why are you so quiet? Well, because you're trying to riz up the intern. What do you want Chin to do? What do you want Chin to do? You're trying to riz up the intern. I don't blame Chin for moving away. You're trying to riz up the intern. What is he meant to do? Awkwardly sit there and hear the old man trying to spit game to the new intern by mentioning his... T That's how you know you're old. That's how you know you're a boomer. When you start using testosterone your testosterone levels as a conversation starter. Why are you so quiet? I'm just adjusting the cameras. Oh. Yeah. Oh, good. To, to focus on me? Yeah. Just yeah, on like Chin, what do you yeah, think your because, testosterone because is George at? Because George is around. Oh, what, what do you, what do you, yeah. <laughs> I love that she's trying to take away the attention from Brian. It got a bit too uncomfortable there, innit? She had to go to Chin. She had to kind of, rev let's talk to somebody else here because if I keep looking at this guy, he's going to try and take, look. <laughs> He's gonna take my knickers off with his eyes. She had to kind of, you know, hey Chin, help. <laughs> I already know. Oh, you already know. Yeah, yeah. he. It it's was like, low, right at first. It was like it's five hundred, six hundred. Then it went to like twelve hundred. Then now nine hundred. You were taking it. Yeah, I took TRT. I wonder if I wonder if that now you're off. It, it. Why is Chin on TRT? Can you imagine? These LA guys are just bizarre, bro. Like. Why is a guy like Chin, who's fairly young, why the fuck are you on TRT? You're not you're not really that jacked either. Like, why? What's the point? You're not trying to get big. You're not super old where you need it. Like, why? Kratom, TRT, you know, so, so, what's it for? Suju, or what's that? Korean, is it Suju? Whatever that, so, whatever that fucking drink is. Beer. Korean barbecue every day. This guy's shits probably smell like fucking. They must smell like a sewer. The stuff that he fucking consumes. Soju, that's it, soju. What about soju? They must smell like a fucking sewer. Can you imagine what Chin's shit smell like? All that stuff he ingests. Jump started your body back. Yeah, so it's, I was off it for like three or four months and it stayed steady at 900 something. But also, you know, drinking and not sleeping and stuff, that'll mess with your testosterone. Uh, I mean, I was drinking during the time. Yeah. <laughs> so who knows how high Good. my testosterone actually is. Chin might be good. the real alcoholic good. in the studio. I mean, it's good that your test is high now, I think. I think. Yeah, it's not crazy high. It's, it's just good like that you're not taking it right now if you don't need it. They said just cycle off it. It's, it's a different way of doing it. Because yeah. some people say you just take it and you always take it for the rest of your life. But they told me just in case I want to Did I you have to fertile. take an estrogen blocker? Yeah. Well, they suggested it. Yeah. I didn't do it at first. And then you got tits. Oh. I've always had tits. No, I'm, I'm just, just kidding. Yeah, I'm just kidding. But they, I get the, I get the impression they don't like each other that much. I think they tolerate each other, but I, I, I don't think they like each other that much. Underlying, I don't think they like each other that much. I, I, I would bet they haven't spent any time alone with each other outside of the pod. I don't think they like each other that much. I get the feeling Chin and Brian aren't really close. I think Chin's probably closer to Brendan even though they're not super close, but I don't think they like each other that much. I don't think there's real kinship or friendship there. I do want you on an Astrozole. An Astrozole? 
Yeah. A little bit of it, like it's twice a, a Estrogen week. inhibitor. He's trying to fucking Dude, it, literally claw his face for, off from his, you know, trying to claw his face off from his head, literally with his fingers. It's so bored. <laughs> so complicated, like all the shit that they look at. I mean, I got screened for 50 different cancers. Wow. It's because cause, cause your cells give off DNA and they can tell what cancer cells are giving off what DNA. That's kind of harrowing when you get... I got a lot of guys my age who don't want to do it. They don't want to know. Yeah, it's scary. That's nerve wracking. But you should know because you'll get you'll get the results. And if it's at stage one or two, they can cure that shit. It's yeah. the problem is that he's really putting a lot of faith in the medical, you know, in medicine and stuff. Like this idea that you can always cure stuff if you catch it early is just flower wrong. No, yes, your chances of curing are higher, but he's really like. Again, there's a real like weird obsession with their mortality, in it. All of these guys, but of course, Bert is the one that vocalizes it more. But I feel like all of them are kind of feeling that way. They're kind of realizing that no matter how much money, no matter how much money they have, the one thing they can't necessarily, you know, buy more of or replenish is their health. Right? Really, it kind of is what it is. It goes where it goes. But they've got all the money in the world. They don't have enough time to spend it. And now they're kind of, you know, obsessive, obsessing about their mortality because they're more worried about people not being able to see how awesome they are forever and ever. The, the, the reason some cancers are so deadly is you don't know it until they're stage four and it's spread all over your body. How long did all these tests take? It took four hours. Oh, okay. So it's, yeah. it's a chunk of time. Yeah, down, down in Naples. It's awesome. Fountain oh, life. It's expensive, I, I, you know, but it's oh, awesome. Yeah. And no, it's going to get... We know it's expensive for sure. How did you pay for it? How do you pay for it? That's what we want to know. <laughs> get to a point where it's not expensive. It's going to get to a point where all of us, when we go to the doctor, we'll get a scan. In you know? the more than 10,000, less than 10,000? Not in the NHS, mate. Not with the NHS over here in the UK. And not with, I'm sure, people in the US who don't have good health insurance. Those are, those are like extras, you know? Those are things that, <laughs> that most people aren't going to be able to afford. A scan you just walk into that just tells you where you're sick. You just, it's like a fucking scan that you get in the airport. You just stand there and it just tells you where you're sick. You know what I mean? That's why having money is actually a good thing because you can actually prolong your life when you have money because you can literally walk into a scan and they can tell you, hey, you have a tumor here. <laughs> get it out now. Whereas regular people just have to wake up with a big headache, faint on the dance floor or at work and then realize, oh, it's too late now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, shit. I mean, I don't know how much clients right. pay for it, but you know, these things Damn. cost a lot because their clientele is wealthy. Yeah. Oh, really? Right? Now, right now, health is for the wealth. I mean, for the yeah, wealthy. We know that. And that's not good. Right now, yeah. it's always been that But way. you can get, but I'm, I'm telling you, dude, every time I talk to these scientists, so much of it is in your control. So just don't smoke, try to sleep, and don't eat like a pig. Start there, and you're already 90% there. Like, just don't eat a lot of sugar, don't drink a lot of alcohol, don't smoke. Starting there, and so you have no vices, have no indulgences, and your life will be worth well, your life. Your life expectancy would increase. You can now live forever and ever. Imagine a life where you can't indulge in things. What's the point of fucking living? <laughs> really and truly, how about they just start making more healthy food available for most of us? What about that? Is that okay? How about making it more? You know, not making it as easy for people to get addicted to cigarettes by making them, I don't know, maybe more expensive or harder to find, whatever the thing is. Maybe increasing those type of things. How about that? Instead of making us cut out having a fucking coffee in the morning at Starbucks. Instead of making us cut out having a drink on a Friday night. Instead of making us cut out having a fucking pizza. Like, fuck off, mate. Like, why not improve the quality of the food first? Make it cheap and ready available for all of us to have. And then we can think about cutting out things. But all these motherfuckers, like, you know, they indulge in whatever the fuck they want and they tell us to fucking eat like fucking what? Like peasants. Fuck off. You're very good. You're very You have good. a pretty clean diet. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, I, I do. I do. I like... <laughs> you have a pretty clean diet. <laughs> Does that mean your dick's clean too? <laughs> Uh, what the fuck is going on man i like uh you know what i fucking i i'm telling you i i'm not what, eating what? as tell much us, tell us saturated, saturated fats. fats this is getting boring <laughs> let's talk no. about something half else. and you drink no i don't 
At all? At all. I mean, I'll have a glass of wine once a week Yeah, now. you're a wine guy. I love that. That's the LA thing, isn't it? That's the LA, that's such an LA fucking phrase. That's such an LA sentence, such an LA reply, such an LA use of words. Um, how much you drink? I don't really drink at all. Really? You don't drink at all? Well, I have a glass of wine when I have some dinner. It's like, that's drinking. If you say you don't drink and then someone, and then somebody else, really, and then you say, no, I do drink when I have dinner, you're still drinking. What is this thing of like, oh, it doesn't count if you have drink with your dinner. But it does count when you're what? At the bar with some randoms. So it only counts when you are drinking and you've got a packet in your pocket. You've got an eight ball burning a hole in your pocket. But it doesn't count when you're having dinner, you know, at a steakhouse. And then you order what? And you drink a bottle of wine between two people. That doesn't count. It just counts when you're in an actual cocktail bar or you're in a nightclub. That's when only it counts. It's such an odd way of using words. Like, I don't drink, but then you do drink. Cool great drink never met him i know but i don't like it anymore something happened to me i'm sensitive hmm. you know i'm sensitive i like I, if i if i just if i've eaten too much or i drank too much i feel it so then i just don't feel it. i'm not disciplined i just feel better when i'm not doing it hmm. so you you'll you'll move towards you know what feels good versus what doesn't what about the shrooms you still do shrooms no no no, dude, I did shrooms. Did I tell you my story? You still do shrooms. Was he doing them? Again, can't you just give up at a certain point? 60-year-old dude getting checked up every week for, you know, unidentified cancers is now also doing shrooms every day. <sighs> to what? To tap into his comedy. He's microdosing on shrooms. To help him with his joke writing. Nah, sometimes giving up is the honorable thing to do. Giving up and actually going back home and looking after your family, raising your kids, that's actually quite honorable. There's nothing wrong with that. This whole chasing the fame thing is odd. Imagine microdosing on LSD and mushrooms when you're 60. So you can be so you can do more fucking jokes about I'm like a horse. When I get the girl, I chuck her on my shoulder. My name is like Pablo, all this sort of stuff. I'm a man. Fuck you know. Why did shrooms on Rogan? Oh yeah! Oh, totally yeah. Right. On oh the my plane god! And everything. But I mean, oh the little god. gummies that you do, like the small dose. You don't yeah, do you that? can do it. It doesn't do anything for me. And you don't. I mean, it weed. does do something for me, but yeah, it just exactly. Koyla, chin dry snitching. You still do shrooms? You still fucking prostitutes? You still going to whorehouses? <laughs> you still doing coke? <laughs> you still on that ketamine? <laughs> Remember, you told me to get you some ketamine the other day. <laughs> are you still doing molly <laughs> it's like bro <laughs> come on man <laughs> just throws me off kilter and I, I i feel better sober like i'm 56 i'm not gonna open any portals i went to hell on mushrooms i went i went i was in heaven at first i was in the garden of eden i was in mother earth's vagina and then i ended up in hell because i took yeah let's mention the pussy one more time just to rem just to remind that girl what time you're on let's mention the pussy one more time just to remember what girl what time you're on Four more grams. And you know what I learned? Not to do mushrooms in that volume. That's what I learned. That's the insight I got. I didn't learn anything else. Too old. You know, there's no secrets, man. Everything takes forever. Have you done mushrooms? It's not? No. Never? No. Really? Yeah. Are you afraid? Yes. Why? Because <laughs> I don't want to go to a third dimension. <laughs> no, you have to. I'm worried I'm going to like uncover some like childhood trauma that I've, I've blocked away. Yeah, yeah, and I just don't want to bring it. Yeah, back. man, that's that happens. Chin, how about you? Of course, <laughs> you've done you done a lot of them. No, I mean my friends would have like like of something like that big, and we're just chewing, swallow it, and then you, you just feel you feel yeah. happy. I but guess. Chin does everything in it. Chin does everything, but he has such a limited range of emotions that it doesn't actually do anything. He has such a limited range of probably life experiences and shit that it just doesn't do anything. You know, it just doesn't go anywhere because there's no real depth, as Brenda will say about the studio. There's no real range. There's no real peaks and valleys. It's just, you know, he lives a life. What's that? What's that quote? He lives a life of um quiet. What's that thing called? What's that quote that Joe Rogan always says? A quiet, life of quiet desperation, is it? Life of quiet desperation. Yeah, that's the quote, right? Yeah, Henry David Thoreau. Most people live life an empty life because of unfulfilling work, lack of leisure time and misplaced values, money, possession and accolades. <laughs>
<laughs> he's just there existing, man. Just ingesting everything and, you know, doing whatever he's doing. You never really tripped. No, I don't want to trip. That's the thing I feel. Yeah, like. Massive men lead lives of quiet desperation. That's Chin. That's Chin Sui. Just ingest mushrooms, kratom, LSD, anything else, and nothing happens. He's just the same guy. He he drinks a lot, doesn't even look drunk. Just that same fucking stone face that he has. The most. I hate tripping. Dude. Isn't that the point to trip? No, I mean, no you, if you take a little bit. Be careful with trip, I hate tripping. I'm telling you. Okay, cool. I'm telling you, man. I went. I dissolved into the sun in Aubrey Marcus's ter uh, word wording. <laughs> Cause that's what happened. The sun swallowed me up and spit me back out because he didn't like the way I tasted. Aubrey Marcus, another legendary grifter. He was like, Pugh. yeah. And I, I was on my back in hell. I could only move my tongue. And it have, was bad. Was it worse? Have you done like ed rape karma? Edibles, just weed edibles. Is yeah, it worse I don't than like that? that shit either. Same. Way worse than that. Because edibles, you're just like, oh, I'm fine. I can't feel myself I thought I was breathe. dying on edibles. Yeah, you, you can't feel yourself breathe. Yeah. So I you're just dying. sitting there like this, like, ah, oh, I can't move my face. I can't breathe. Yeah. That sucks. Scary. I'm That's not gonna, I, I'm not going to lie. Again, I, I like to drink. I like to take a lot of drugs. And when I go out and have fun with my party stuff. But there's nothing more boring than talking about the drugs and the drinks that you do to people like this. There's nothing more boring. There's nothing more lame than just go and do it and shut the fuck up. Especially at this age. Like, can you imagine sitting around with your pals and just, oh, we're so high. It's like, what? You're 60, bro. You're 60. So telling me about how you took edibles and you you couldn't move and you were sinking. Oh, oh. It's like, bro, people do drugs and drink every day, B. It's not that big. It's not that deep. Like, it really isn't. Oh my god, man! I took what I took half a Xanax, and I was so sad. Grow up, man. Take five to the face, and then come back to me. Worst, but you know the the rest of it is whatever. Is that yeah? Be mushrooms oh. are mushrooms are like fucking. But mushrooms different. You you you'll be there in the ground that the carpet will start to literally melt. Oh, no, really? I'm not joking. Oh really? Oh, you don't even you. Oh, mushrooms! I met a genie in my in my trip. He's like, you don't know. Let me sort you out. He's like, hey, you don't know about mushrooms. Let me sort you out. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, you, 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 you. Come here. You don't know about mushrooms. Let me let me sort you out. Come here, man. You ever seen a six-year-old dick? You ever seen balls that hang down to my ankles? Come here. Come here. Come here. Let me give you some mushrooms. No, nah, these are not grapes. They're not grapes, but you might get... <laughs> you know what I mean. These aren't grapes. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Shh. shh don't scream. Don't scream. Don't scream. I'm a man. <laughs> Get out of I here. met a genie. I mean, you're, you'll like you look over and the next person next to you is in the desert and their hair is flowing. I'm serious. Are you eating the actual mushroom or are you eating the synthetic gummy? No, one? you eat the mushrooms. Like, you, like the, you're the, chewing uh, on them. If you go to a ceremony, they gave me chocolate that was really. You know, I also don't like as much as I hate Brian talking about drugs when he's like 60, like trying to be cool. You know, I also think is extra lame. Her pretending she doesn't know any of this stuff. Her pretending like she's the first time she's heard. Oh my God, I did it. Like this feigning ignorance about you don't know what he's talking about. It's like, come on, come on, man. You, you don't like, you're too old as well to be cute looking innocent. You're not that, you're not that young. Yeah, I mean, you're too old to look like innocent cute. Like, let's relax. You know what he's talking about. Oh, I have no idea. Oh my God, really? Oh, wow. Oh. So what you do in the mushrooms like the gummies? It's like, oh, oh. it's like, come on, man. What the fuck is this shit, bro? What the fuck is this? This is like walking into the study area to meet your friends and you see him risen up some girl and you awkwardly have to stand around and watch them entertain this weird, clunky, fucking flirting, you know, um, ritual or something. It's like, bro, either give the guy your number or let's just move on, please, because this is this is a bit like weird. Really high dose, but man, I mean, I'm talking about DMT. Have you ever done DMT? Mm -mm. Ooh, I smoked DMT. Me and Brendan, that shit sends you to a different dimension. You for did DMT real. and you're both still cunts. You both d did DMT and you're both still objectively two of the worst people to ever walk the face of the earth. Is how is that possible? You did all these drugs and nothing changed. <laughs> nothing changed you're still pieces of shit that's impossible 
you you go blind. You 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 won't see anything. You'll just go boom. And then what happens is you just see uh like what they call it sacred geometry. You see all these shapes and colors. But that lasts 3 minutes. You want it to last longer. Cuz once you learn how to ride it, <laughs> that's not what she said. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what she said. She did not want it to last longer. Once you learn how to ride that spaceship, because at first you're gonna be trying to control the spaceship. Yeah. The biggest thing about psychedelics is don't fucking try to control anything. Oh really? Let oh really? You shouldn't control psychedelics. Oh really? I had no idea. Oh really? So when you're high, you shouldn't try to control that high. You should actually let go and surrender to the high. Oh my god, I didn't know that. No way, dude. When you smoke weed, your mind just goes, Way. it's like, fuck off, you old cunt. Go look after your fucking kids, bro. Take your kid to soccer practice or something, bro. Buy your daughter a Barbie. What the fuck is this, bro? Let it take you, man. That's where you can understand, like, if you if you can learn how like they've had yogis like swamis who study yeah, meditation please, please tell us uh about do like yogis. come on please come on man please come on man come on fucking callan fucking grishna whatever your fucking name is come on tell us about yogis tell us about that summer you spent in fucking delhi come on tell us tell us about your your fucking gap year your back your gap year fucking back backpacking you know in fucking <laughs> in bangladesh come on tell us tell us please tell us all the the wisdom you've learned tell us please impart on us this 50 hits a crazy amount and within their trip they're lucid within their trip they just look at you and they go they're just witnessing themselves there's a famous witness story me. about this swami who took witness me if you know like, you know witness an me. ungodly amount of acid to prove what and he and as he was an acid he he just looked at him and he went like this ha 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 you can't get me dude this nigga thinks he's ice spice huh callan spice why is he sticking out his tongue like that this nigga thinks he's ice spice he he just looked at him and he went like this ha 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 you can't get me dude <laughs> i mean i'm <laughs> tripping but i know exactly where callan i am callan spice because he was able to like Old separate stick out your tongue his like that mind again, man from himself so he's able to watch his own trip that's that's the idea behind vedanta yeah, he thinks he's a baddie isn't it callum thinks he's a fucking baddie he's sticking out his tongue for the ladies <laughs> this could be in your asshole <laughs> i can i can be a witness i think they call it a sakshi i can be a witness to my body oh, it's called a sakshi is it it's called a sakshi the coincidence of that, isn't it? It's called a sakshi, really. Sakshi. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> it's called a sakshi. I think it's called a would you fuck me. It's called a would you fuck me. It's this weird little practice they do where they kind of get the girl to bend over as she's standing up in a sort of like a downward dog pose. And the guy comes behind, takes off his trousers and then just starts thrusting in the air. And then if he ends up kind of finding a hole, he just like stays there. You know? <laughs> Body to my to bring up burning monk watch this shit oh duh. so david halberstam of the new york times saw in 1963 a vietnamese monk light himself on fire put a monk on fire oh my god now i get why brendan doesn't let you do this show on your own you are so fucking boring this is guy is the worst companion you'd ever need in the fucking afters honestly this guy is so fucking boring you're scaring away the hose you're even scaring away chin He's so boring, he scared Chin away. Chin went to go fix the cameras, allegedly. He's scaring the hoes, he's scaring Chin. Fire. All right, that's fine. <laughs> I'm going to show you this picture. This is 1963. Look at that picture, the burning monk. No. Yes. I mean, we right. we're not going to play it, but... No, just to, you don't have to do that, but okay. you can just, you can see it. I mean, you know... Yeah, um, I can see it. Just, we're not going to play it. Oh, really? You're not going to play a video of a monk burning themselves on fire, Chin? You fucking double-digit donkey as well. This guy is, honestly, bro, outside of pressing control and delete, this guy's brain knowledge is fucking down in the dumps, isn't it? If it doesn't, if it doesn't have to do with fucking plugging in an RCA cable into somewhere, he does no idea what's going on, does he? Obviously, we're not going to play the video. Like, oh, really? You're not going to play the video of the monk burning themselves alive? You're not going to play that on the podcast, really?
<laughs> this nigga, man, like outside of fucking SLRs, he doesn't know what he's doing, does he? He really doesn't know where he is, where he's going. Fucking hell, mate. If he doesn't have an audio interface, he doesn't know what the fuck he's fucking doing. Absolute div. Dude, That's the famous there. picture. Okay, that changed everything. See that picture right there? Hold on, right there? Yeah. Okay, so that guy lit himself on fire to protest how the the Vietnamese, South Vietnamese government at the time in 19... himself from his body, from witnessing his... I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. But fast forward is all shit. Fuck that shit. Let's get to some other bits. Come on, man. Oh, my God. What, what about ketamine? Have you done that? No. But it's all very similar stuff. <laughs> yeah. Ketamine... <laughs> this girl's full of shit. She acts like she doesn't know nothing. She knows everything, bro. She knows everything, bro. This girl looks like the perfect person that you've used. If you told her, hey, you want to bump? Before you even finish your sentence, she'd be, you know, she'd be fucking pulling out her phone, getting her card out, getting a little straw. You know what I mean? Do you want to? She's like, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Oh my God, thank you. Of course. Thanks for asking. What's your name again? Leaning in like that. What's your name again? Leaning into your cheeks. Like, what's your name again? Like, what's your name again? <laughs> oh my god, what's your name? Uh, I haven't done I haven't done this in so long. It's like bitch, come on. This is I guess makes you feel really uh I guess it's a sex drug. It kind of dilates. But there's things. therapy for it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you want to get banged in a bathhouse and you don't want it to hurt. Take a little oh, look. Oh, look at that lean in. She ready, isn't it? She's already limbered up. She's a her asshole is that. Mm. Look, she look, look at that lean in. Which means, you know, banged in the lens. She kind of lend in a bit, isn't it? She was happy about that. Yeah, but if you want to get banged in a bathhouse and you don't want it to hurt, take a little well chin nose. <laughs> <laughs> take a little time, academy. Yo. Yeah, pick a spot on the wall. <laughs> Brian's heard that Brendan's banging it. Brian's heard that Brendan allegedly is having sex with this young lady, which is what BGL said, not not me. I didn't make up this rumor. BGL said on, on an interview recently that he's been talking to this young lady's ex-boyfriend or current boyfriend or whatever. And allegedly the story is that she's been texting Brendan late at night and the boyfriend got annoyed. And then I think they broke up. And the suggestion is that Brendan's been smashing her, you know, in the room that they record fucking, you know, the golden hour or something. It wouldn't surprise me if that's true, but it also wouldn't surprise me if Brian's the type of guy who got turned on hearing that and was like, you know what? I want to fuck her as well, mate. You know what I mean? I want to get in as well, mate. You know what I mean? Her, she likes the drugs. Let's just, just, you know what I mean? Let's peck her up a bit. Get her some ketamine. Get her some of that shit that fucking, you know, that sent fucking, what's his name? Um, what's that fucking guy's name from Friends into a spiral? Let's go from there, innit? You feel me? Oh. <laughs> it's the, it used to be called the gay drug. I didn't know that. Yeah. Ketamine. I recently learned. When did, when was it called the gay drug? Like, I don't, again, I go out a lot. I don't really, I don't remember it being calling, being called a, a specific, the gay drug is like poppers and like GHB. I don't remember ketamine being a gay drug. I think this is just an excuse for them to suck dick. <laughs> I just did the gay drug. I did the, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> don't make an excuse. Don't make an excuse. The gay drug, my ass. It's the gay one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Learned what a bathhouse is. Oh. Thanks to that Dahmer documentary. So Yeah. That was a uh, bathhouse. Yeah, that's where, it. R.I.P. Where... Matthew Perry. R.I.P. Matthew Perry. That's the one. Big up um some guy. R.I.P. Matthew Perry. For all the rage. But you know, I've been to the bathhouses in Turkey. Bring up the Haman in but Turkey. But to be fair, to that's be not fair. Get... American people are fucking odd anyway. American fucking medicine is fucking bizarre. Addiction fucking treatment is fucking odd. The fact that it's actually even ex uh, accepted that you can treat addicts with ketamine is insane. If you're an addict, you have no business doing any drugs. You're a fucking addict. You should be thinking about your life after that. You know what I mean? That should be behind you. The fact that they have, they allowed that to be an actual treatment was insane in the first place. Like what? Like you're, you're going to take drugs to wean yourself off of doing drugs long-term. Really? <sighs> 
you're playing with fire, bro. That is that is a that is actually dicey dicey. So I don't know, man. I feel so bad for Matthew Perry. I honestly do, man. He was probably going through it. You know what I mean? He was probably really, really going through it. Yeah, that's where they just scrub the shit out of you. Giant men. Giant men with mustaches take cloths and sponges and scrubs to your body. That shit right there. And girls, you get though. scrubbed down, but they're big. And it's not men who do that to women. That's bullshit. It's women who do it to women, men. <laughs> do you think he's just been on his Instagram feed? <laughs> Uche. An ex asked me if I could get him poppers. Oh my God. That should have been the red flag. <laughs> Uh, that's amazing i love that <laughs> he asked me for poppers i should have known it's like yeah he, he wanted to freeze him and he brought a guy around a really like a really twinky looking guy <laughs> maybe i should have known he promised me he was by no he's by he's by don't worry he's by he's like yeah right <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking hell man this is one boring ass fucking podcast. I'm not gonna lie. Do it to men in Turkey and Istanbul. That's ancient shit right there. They'll shave you. They do the whole fucking huh. thing. Yeah. Oldest baths. Like a spa. Tur Turkey's got it going on. Yeah, Turkey's the best. Turkey's a really oh. great place. Has Brian been? Has Brian been using Instagram for the first time in months or something? Yeah. This feels like fucking. I see that body Instagram right there. The explore page topics. He just randomly get his algorithm started showing him like Turkish stuff. Like, come on, bro. Like, really? This is what we're talking about. That'll never be me. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Do you find that attractive? No. You don't care though. No, I care. I care. Yeah. That's not doing it for me. No. 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 But have you ever dated anybody who had a body like that? No. No. What do you look for? A lot of muscles? What do you like? What's no, your dream no. man? I, you know, I like an average dude. Like, I don't want you to look like a laundry bag full of meat. Oh, I, you know. Air Griffin's out. Big up Sarlux. Let's go back there. Let's go back a little bit. Ket Fund. Yeah, big up the Ket Fund. Ket Fund's coming back. No Ket for a while for me, though, because Please. I've got this fucking stupid root canal coming up. On, oh, yeah, yeah, actually. Root canal fucking coming up on fucking Tuesday. Let's see what the damage is. Like, fucking hell, mate. I've already put down a deposit of like 150 for it. I've got about 450 more to go. I might just run out on my root canal surgery, actually. I might just run out. I might just get it and then just run. <laughs> I might just get the root canal surgery and just run. Just run for the door. <laughs> Imagine. I'm just going to run for the door. Just run. Fuck it. Run. Start blazing down the fucking tree. <laughs> uh, I bet that's happened before, though. It must have happened, right? I bet that's happened. I bet that's fucking happened. I bet somebody. I bet that's happened because you usually pay after, right? You usually have to go down to reception to pay. I bet it's happened before. Someone just runs. Like, <laughs> but then, of course, you burn that place, and you can't go back again. They blacklist you, obviously. They've got your address as well, so they can obviously come and get you later on. Oh, I should have put a fake address, shouldn't I? Fuck, I, put, I should have put a fake address. I put my real address. If I would have put a fake address, I would have run. Just... Um, but yeah, let's play this again. This is crazy. This is all kind of a little bit. Oh, yeah, true. You'll be, you'll be drugged up, no running. Yeah, true. True, that's true. <laughs> Never let them know your next... <laughs> Always keep them guessing. <laughs> you get to reception and be like, eh, to the girl reception. <sighs> oh, God. Now, she's leaning too forward for me at the moment. Like, you know, she's a grown woman. She knows what she's doing, right? She, she knows the game. And I don't know, these questions feel a little bit inappropriate. Especially for the, you know? Again, maybe I'm being a prude. Maybe I'm being a fucking P-U-S-S-Y. But this feels a little bit inappropriate. A tiny bit inappropriate to me. Yeah. I see that body right there? That'll never be me. 
You understand? <laughs> Do you find that attractive? No. You don't care, though. <laughs> He's fucking ready, isn't it? He's heard the stories of her, isn't it? Maybe Brendan's told him that she's a screamer or something, right? Maybe Brendan's told her, like, you know, she's fucking, you know, she's out here gushing like fucking the River Nile or some shit. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, you remember that place in Hawaii, mate? That's what she's like. You know what I mean? He's giving us some stories and Brent Brown's like, <laughs> and that's when he's, that's why. Because this, this, this comes out of the blue. This, this seems a little bit, he's too activated here. Something's happened. Somebody's told him something, you know? Something, somebody's told him something. No, I care. I care. Yeah, I care. that's not doing it for me. No, no, no. But have you ever dated anybody who had a body like that? No, no. What do you look for? A lot of muscles. What do you like? What's no, your dream no. man? I, you know, I like an average dude. Like, I don't want you to look like a laundry bag full of. So hold on. You like a you you like a you like an average guy, but then you also wouldn't want. Wasn't that guy on the picture an average looking dude? That guy here wasn't that isn't that an average isn't that what average guys look, usually look like? I like an average guy, but not a average like this. What's average? What's what's above this then? <laughs> if women are some women are so full of shit. What does this mean? If this isn't average, what is average? <laughs> no, isn't this average? And Brian, like, I got a better body than them. Should I take off my t-shirt? I'm surprised Brian didn't offer to take off his top. I'm surprised Brian didn't offer to take off his top. Yeah. That's not doing it for me. No. 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 But have you ever dated anybody who had a body like that? No. No. Mm -hmm. What do you look for? A lot of muscles? What do you like? No, What's your dream no. man? I, you know, I like an average dude. Like, I don't want you to look like a laundry bag full of meat. You know really? Eric Griffin, you're out, unfortunately. Eric Griffin, you're out. Eric Griffin's out. You know what I mean? Fucking strays at Eric Griffin. Eric Griffin's out. <laughs> Okay. Just like being average, you know. The average. Yeah. No, but but what about muscle? Muscle. Like LeBron James doesn't. The idea of LeBron James isn't intriguing. <laughs> She's trying to find. He's trying to find out if she likes black girls, black guys. <laughs> I get why he's doing this because I guess there's some girls if they're into black dudes and you're Brian and you're very white, there's no point even trying. You know what I mean? You're never gonna. You're never gonna get anywhere. There's some girls who just, you know, they just like a certain type of nigga. They love a certain type of fog, gangsta, big, big, big guy, you know, mandingo. They love, they love a certain type. So maybe that's why he's fishing. Do you like? Let's see what she says. Does she like, does she like the niggas or no? <laughs> he's a little too muscular. Yeah. I don't want to feel fat next to you. He's giant. Yeah, no, he's very tall. Right, and so you don't mind 6'10". No, I'm 5'2". I don't care how tall you are. Right, so that, that would... Keith Thompson, big up. Imagine if you're Brian and Bapa got 1.6 mil while telling you to take the stock. Yep, exactly. And and giving you less percentage, by the way. He got... You know what's really funny about that 1.6 mil you just brought up, I just remembered? They gave that to Brendan. Isn't that a bit fucked up that he has his own ad deals? They got a podcast together, but he has his own ad deal things. <laughs> like he has his separate ones. That's a bit. It's a bit fucked up, isn't it? A little bit. Like you split the pod proceeds, but then you got you got your own. A little bit weird. <laughs> you split the money 50-50, but when the ad money comes in, some of it's for you, some of it's for somebody else. But yeah, but Brian, again, he's got money. He doesn't care. Like, Brian comes from actual wealth. Like, he's not rich. He comes from actual wealth. Like, big money. Like, I'm I, I'm, all my, I'm all but certain, again, this is my theory, that he's, he gets an allowance. He gets something from his parents, at, even at his age. I'm almost certain of it. Almost certain of it. Wouldn't bother you. No. Yeah, he's a super athlete. He's a super athlete. When I used to work locker rooms, I, I've been in a locker room with this guy. He has cut. You've seen him? Oh, yeah. I used to do locker room oh, interviews. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a... Well, cut. he's a point oh 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 one. When I used to work locker rooms? Huh? Yo, is this intern for the streets? 
she's for the streets, isn't it? No wonder they're all getting happy. She's for the streets. She might fuck all the man them. <laughs> I did locker rooms, interviews. Yeah, sure. Interviews. Sure. <laughs> Percenter. Right? I mean, yeah. that guy's just a total freak. Yeah. What is he, 6'9? 260? Oh I mean, come my on. Oh, God, they're still doing this thing, this high sides conversation stuff. Oh, my God, this is excruciating, man. I'm going to end this, honestly. Look Please, at that. God. Yeah. That's what you look like without your shirt on. Kind of is, actually. <laughs> Only much smaller. No, that's, that's just a different kind of, that's oh, a different. Out they're flirting, isn't it? They're actually flirting. That's what you kind of look like with your shirt off. They're actually flirting. No wonder Chin went to fix the camera. Look at Chin's face. He doesn't know what to do. Look at Chin. <laughs> look at Chin. <laughs> Trying to look dead on. <laughs> Chin is the third wheel. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Chin is dying inside. <sighs> he wants Bard to come. Is it Bard? Chin wants Bard to come back. Where's Bard? Bard, please come back. Please come back, Bard. Please come back, Bard. <laughs> <laughs> Chin is dying. Jesus Christ, man. Athlete. That's a different yeah. kind of athlete altogether. Oh, no. Wow, it doesn't want to show. Look at that. Look at you. That was on Rogan when they said, take your shirt off. <laughs> I, I was flexing there. But still, that's freaking. Ah. Yo, is she coming? Is she fucking cooming? Is she coming? Uh, oh, might have to let these Persian tits sit on your face, bruh. Uh. <laughs> you can be my Aladdin any day. <laughs> Brian might be the oldest Aladdin ever, but you know, we'll let it run. <laughs> it's, it's just Jack. not. It's just not. I don't <laughs> okay, look, dude. I don't want to look at myself anymore. I'm naked. It's gross. <laughs> Look at that guy. Look at that. Was that Delia in that photo? Yeah. Yeah, but that's, yeah. yeah. Go, go to that yeah. picture right there. Yeah, let's that was not, me and Brandon. Let's, back not put, the... let's not put Delia on the screen, please. Let's not put Delia on the screen. Please, 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 please. Yo, imagine this. Imagine listening to this as an audio podcast. Imagine you're on your commute to work in the morning and you slap this on. Because I don't know about you, but I'm very precious. I'm very protective of my commute of what i listen to on the way to work a 30 minute journey 45 minute journey in east in east account don't waste my time with nonsense when you're sitting there on the train in your car on the bus big up keith thompson brian fishes better than rogan <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> big up keith thompson appreciate you brother imagine you're sitting on the fucking train on a bus and you're hearing this for the first 20 minutes of your journey, you're commuting to work. You're like, what the fuck? You downloaded the podcast ahead of time so you could listen to it in case the train went underground or you didn't have a signal. You prepared for this. And then you're listening to this. This old geriatric guy trying to get into the pants of some intern that, in my opinion, is just entertaining him, really, for the most part. She doesn't, she's not fucking interested. Do you know what I mean? She's been she's been around the block. She knows the game. She knows what she's doing. She knows what she's gonna get out of this, but she has no interest. You know what I mean? Like she's literally just entertaining his nonsense, and he's just you know, he's like the old guy at a fucking you know, at the cocktail bar trying to chat up the fucking bartenders and stuff. It's like, bro, come on, man. The day right there that was so funny. You want it with this one? No, no, no. That's me. I'm pool. That's pool mm -hmm. boy. Look at me. I was a young man. I was twenty six. I never lifted weights back then. Not that it makes a difference anyway. Interesting. Look at Delia. Yeah. He <laughs> How, was young. When is this picture from? 17. Chris looks good there. Yeah, yeah. We're going to stop there. I'm not, I'm not having them reminiscing over pictures they see on Google. Like, you can get fucked off. You can get fucked. I don't know what's going on here. Um, Brian's like, look how happy he is when he sees pictures of himself. 
that's pure narcissist isn't it right like most of the time when i have to like i don't even think i even do it on here fucking rewatch clips of myself on here it's fucking embarrassing it's cringe as fuck he's just sitting there like cheesing at pictures of himself on google like this is bizarre behavior bro bizarre behavior but anyway um yeah whatever cool fuck them um fuck everybody involved actually the funny thing about this all this talk and nobody in that room is gonna get their dick sucked <laughs> that's the funny thing all of this blue balling all of this fucking you know edging and nobody's actually gonna get their dicks wet no one because she's just entertaining him because she's a pro and she knows what she's doing and you know brian callen obviously told us his testosterone levels are what i don't know 2500 gt or whatever turbo he has a, a fucking test which is nice you know he has a wife at home and two kids though right but it's fine to chat up the fucking intern live on air cool yeah no problem about that whatsoever um whatever cool whatever um you know i don't know he needs to give up that's what i'd say he needs to fucking give up on life because yeah <laughs>